Hi, my name is Jose Ruiz, and today I will be speaking, I will be rebuttaling the claim that future colonization of the moon is imperative for the United States' continued status as a superpower. The claims used to back up this point are first, the program creates economically stimulating technology. Second, the moon provides an efficient stepping stone in future space missions. And third, other nations have expressed intentions of their own lunar exploration. First, the program creates economically stimulating technologies. The flaw I see from this point is that it does not relate to its major claim, which states that it is that future colonization of the moon is imperative for the U.S. continued status as a superpower. I believe it doesn't connect because one of its points used is mentions that the spend to return ratio is seven to eight dollars to one. Yes, there might be some return. But what is that return money being used for? Is it being used to for future colonization? Is it being used for other missions, Mars missions? Or what, what is the money being used for? If you would have expanded this idea and said that we were going to use this money to help us colonize the moon in the future, it would have probably strengthened and made that point a little bit more valid. Second, the moon provides an efficient stepping stone in future space missions. The issue I have with this point is that in his speech he mentions, he implies that lunar pioneers can use the water found as hydration. I believe his implications are developed wrongfully since we do not know if the water is drinkable. He also mentions that there was, um, there was a dozen two gallon buckets found, but how much, how many people can a dozen two gallon bucks really uh, hold up to can really colonize with two with a dozen two gallon bucket. Also, he mentions that the escape speed of the Earth is 11.2 kilometers per second, which is 4.6 times less efficient than the Moon, which is 2.4 kilometers per second. I think he made a, a wrongful inference since this states that gravity is less in the Moon. And according to NASA, uh, when you are in the moon, muscle mass can vanish at a rate as high as 5% a week. So if we make the math, you would practically have your muscle mass would practically be gone in a matter of months. Third, he mentions that other nations have expressed intentions of their own lunar exploration. He mentions that in a speech that China wants to establish a base on the moon to exploit its natural resources. He never mentions anything about trying to colonize the moon in the future. China never says that they want to do this, so it doesn't support its major point. In conclusion, the secondary claims are not efficiently established to strengthen his major claim. First, by not expanding extending the point of what the revenue will be used for. Second, by wrongfully developing influences that escape speed is the reason for colonizing the moon, which undermines the fact that there is less gravity on the moon, which is in turn is uh, not healthy for human beings. And third, that making the wrong, by making the wrong implication that the Chinese want to colonize the moon. Thank you. All right, all the structural issues are pretty solid. Uh, your challenge on the first point is one of relevance, and uh, you've got this whole discussion of what the economic analysis seems to imply. Uh, it's not really clear what it is you're suggesting that uh, reinvestment of the money that we, we get on our return in investment 
needs to go to uh, further space exploration. That's the only way that it would have value. I'm not sure why that is the case. It sounds at this point like you're doing a little bit of a critique of the advocate's point rather than a refutation of the point. And for instance, if there was a demonstration that we got better economic returns from some other uh, form of investment, I think that that would be a better counterclaim on this point uh, than the one that you are offering here. Uh, the challenge on the second issue seems to suggest that the water point is primarily about hydration. I don't know how true that is. I, I, my memory is not sharp enough to recall. If we were listening to this immediately afterwards, we'd be able to pick that out. I think there was also some fuel issues that went along with that. Uh, you've got an okay press on it, though, for the hydration issue. Well, do we know that the water would be safe to drink? I also thought you had a reasonable press on it. It doesn't really sound like there's a sufficient amount. I'm not sure that the advocate said that uh, we know that there's a sufficient amount, but there's a possibility of it which would make this uh, more probable or more likely to be able to uh, be a success. Uh, your argument about the muscle mass seems to be a generic argument that says any um, extraterrestrial uh, type of activity is going to result in loss of mass and ultimately means that we can't really go any place uh, because of the lack of gravity uh, or yeah, the, the reduced amount of gravity. Mm, that might be the inference that you're trying to make. I'm making that from what you've said and I think that you need to have a clearer statement of that. On the argument at the end about China, you kind of question what China's intentions are but you don't question the evidence that the advocate presents and you don't present any evidence on your own, there's just some questions. And I, I don't know for sure what China plans on doing, why anybody thinks China's planning on doing this, whether or not they have any chance of doing this from either the argument that you were telling us about or the arguments that you made today. So it needs to be a little bit sharper than that. All right, thank you.